Well, hello, fish addicts. Today we're going to be going over aquarium heaters. Uh, our main go-to heater here in the store that I find that we sell the most of is the Eheim heater. And I think a lot of that comes to do with the reliability. It is a German-made heater, which you know anything made out of Germany is going to be pretty much good quality. Uh, another really great factor about these heaters, they're very power efficient. Uh, for an example, a normal average heater, I won't say any brand names, 300 watt heater will do about an 80 gallon tank. However, with Eheim, their 300 watt heater will do up to a 264 tank. So you get a lot more bang for the buck. As with any heater, whether it's Eheim or any other one, safety is always something a concern with heaters. You are dealing with electricity and you're dealing with water. So, first off, I did a little quick review over their instructions in the manual, especially on the Eheim, which I found funny because they said that if the heater goes below water, make sure you unplug it. The funny part about that is, Eheim's heaters are fully submersible. But then I thought back that years ago when Eheim first started was making the heaters, they weren't submersible, so I guess they just didn't update their instructions, so don't let that confuse you. Always inspect the product before you plug it in. Make sure there's no breaks in the cord or anything like that, because that can be very dangerous. Also remember, these things can get quite hot, so you want to be careful that it's not turned up or plugged in, because you will get burned. Uh, another great thing is keep in mind with that as an edit here, always make sure you install a drip loop. And basically what a drip loop is, when the cord comes from the heater and comes down, I'll show you on a, a, a heater. So basically the way this works, your heater will be in your tank. They recommend you installing it upright for, per, for better accuracy, but they can go vertical. When the cord leaves the back of your tank and goes down, always try to have a bit of a drop in it before it plugs into the wall. We're going to put a little picture up in the corner that will show you what we're talking about. And the reason for that, if you ever get water run down the cord, it's not running directly into your outlet in the wall, and which can cause a fire. So that's very, very important with all heaters. Make sure they're secured properly. They usually come with suction cups or some type of a holder. Make sure you do use these. You don't want this thing banging around because it is glass and it could get broken. Okay, so for this is a very simple thing to use. First off, place your heater in the tank wherever you're going to place it. Make sure it's suction cupped, it's secured. Do not plug it in for 20 to 30 minutes. Basically, well, the reason you're doing that is you want the thermostat that's built in this heater to adjust to the surrounding environment, which is your water temperature of the actual tank, not the ambient air temperature that has been sitting in, in the box. Make sure this thing is always submerged when it is plugged in. So if you ever unplug it to do a water change, whatnot, make sure you unplug this for 15 minutes before you do your water change. You do not want to let this heater come out of the water while it's still plugged in hot because it can damage the glass. Now that's another thing, always look at your glass. If you ever see any kind of water building up inside this thing, unplug it immediately, get yourself another heater, toss it, it's defective and you can actually get hurt very badly by this. Now, once it's sat in there for 20 minutes, or three minutes, then you're able to plug it in on the top. We're gonna to zoom in on this for you to see. There's a little dot, you're gonna set your temperature and you're going to watch the small light, there's a light on the thing will light up. When that light comes on, that means the heater is engaged and is heating up to the desired temperature. When it goes off, that means the heater has reached it, and now she's going to hold steady for you. Same as any kind of a house thermostat or for a furnace or whatnot. So there's a couple parts to this heater. You've got your temperature select ring, which is your blue ring, and you have your arrow indicators, the red one. The other thing about these heaters that's important to pay attention to is the minimum water line. That means basically you have to have at least this much of a heater below the water at all times. On other heaters, always pay attention. Sometimes they have a maximum water line, means that they're not submersible. Minimum means they are. So basically how to set this. All you have to do is move the arrow to the location that you want, whatever your desired heat temperature is. Once you have it there, you're going to plug it in and you're going to let it run for 24 hours. At the end of 24 hours, what you want to do because you can calibrate these as for different size aquariums, have a thermometer handy, which you should have at all times anyway, to make sure your heater is working right. Look at the temperature on your thermometer. Then turn the blue dial to the number on the blue, the th blue ring matches where you put the arrow based on what your thermometer is telling you. Most times this is already totally on accuracy, it's perfect. But sometimes you may have to adjust it because it might have got shifted in packaging or shipping or whatnot. So it's just simply then you just turn it to match up. That calibrates this heater. It's as simple as that. 
So that's our review on Eheim heaters, the safety features, how to calibrate them, and how to get the most money out of your heater. This is Eric from Fish Eggs. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment. Don't have me come look for you.